today. <laughs> this is not so easy a film. Uh, first of all, uh, sorry for my not great English, but I think we will try and maybe it's enough to bring your my essence and you can understand me. I would like to say a big, uh, big thank to one person, it's Hannah, the person who actually did a lot that today all these screenings are sold out and uh, so smoothly as they are. Thank you so much. I would like to say thank you so much to Thomas Lennon, the person who really loves it, this film and uh, fight for this film. A big thank to Adam, Jay Siegel, a person who helps with publicity to bring courage to American people. And I would also say a big thank to my film team, Tanya Hauricic, the camera woman of this film. She's till now in Belarus. And three protagonists, Pavel, Dennis and Marina, for their courage. It is a very personal film. Um, there is a balance in this film. There are not so much hard footage. Uh, it's clear for what reason. Okay, let's be short. I just want to say my story. That actually is tradition for this film. Again, a good friend of me was arrested seven months ago. She were in woman cell in a prison in Belarus um, with some famous woman, human rights activists, journalists, and all of them ask a friend of me, Tanya, you are fresh, you're coming from a street, and we are sitting here more than seven and eight months. We understand that we will get these three, five years of prison. And maybe we are ready to sit this time. But please, say us honestly, you are fresh, you are coming from the street. Does it make it sense? A friend of me was not able to answer this question. Ten days later, she was suddenly released because she is mother of five children. After I heard this story, I understood that we, Belarusian and people in, from West, actually have to do something that these people will never have these questions to us. And one of this, my action is a, a portrait action, and every of you have this portrait today. It is a small gesture of solidarity with these people. And I really want to say to you, please watch this film with thoughts about these people. We have 900 political prisoners officially. It is 10 these cinemas in general. I would like to ask if it's possible to take this portrait and to uh, write it in, in the sky. And we would like to do a photo for the families of these people. And sense is in understanding or in expression. So I know many of you will be eager to talk about the political situation in Belarus. But I am a filmmaker and uh, I, I would like to ask some questions about the filmmaking because it's very important, I think, to understand that documentary film is a subtle craft when it is done well. And I want to ask some questions about storytelling. I am struck and very admiring of the fact, not just what is in the film, but what is not in this film. There are um, very few explanations. There are no title cards, almost. No, you know, explanatory, no explanations. Very few, if you notice, there are almost no interviews. 
there are moments of interview, but very, very few. And I want to ask you about the decision of what you did not do. Thank you for your eyes. Yeah, you can just you can just keep looking and looking into your eyes. Ah. Is that what I mean? I think so. It's possible to see and see. Mm. But not every person can see. Mm. Um, Indeed, it it's was an obs observation documentary, and it was very important for me that it will be not an infor informational film. Because Kino is not about information. Kino is about atmosphere. Film is not about the film, it's about the film. Yeah, you live through movies. Speak to the present. You live, oh, I'm sorry, you yeah. Live you live you live through movies. People don't see films. People live films. Mm. Mm. And uh, for me, it was very important uh, to keep the balance. Mm. Not to do person kaput with hard footage. Because all of us, the Russian people, West European, West uh, uh, US people, have information about the Belarus. Mm. And have seen. Mm the massacre footage. Mm. And it was important for me to keep this balance in the film, mm. to give so much as possible that people will feel it, feel it mm -hmm. and uh, to give person a possibility to, uh, to lie, yeah? not to be uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. not to be the uh, not to be the material. Not for the audience not to be killed. Oh, just killed by the material? Mm, mm, mm. Because to be oppressed by the yeah, material. Because there are some people in Belarus who are in Lithuania right now, they were uh, in the uh, prison oh. and they could not see the film. Mm. They are staying and saying, sorry, I cannot. Mm. Yeah, and it was quite important. Mm. And I see that you uh, understand what it means that you cannot put in your film all topics. Right. Yeah. You have to to do a, a selection of your focus. Yeah? Yes. And for yes. me, it was important to keep uh, this uh, this transformation from theater, from forbidden underground mm -hmm. level, and this transformation uh, on the street, because these guys from the theater working with with sense, with instinct, with this sense, sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they are working with topics that are forbidden in this yes. country, yes. and they are working is more than seventy years. On my opinion, art cannot change the future, but art can influence. Sorry, art cannot change the history, but art can influence the future, and these people doing. It. Mm. Then it's parallel. So that was my my next question is that you end the film not with you're not in the streets where you end the film. You're in theater. And I think for Americans maybe we don't understand how big a presence theater is in Eastern European art and Tell me about uh, your decision to end not with, I mean, everybody, first of all, yes, we know the broad strokes of what happened, um, but the, it, the normal thing would not be to end in theater. The normal thing would be to end in the streets. Mm -hmm. And tell me about that decision to end with theater. Uh, it was my decision because the story has no end, mm. has no final. And it's clear that you cannot, because it's documentary, it's, it's a part of people's lives. Yeah? And you cannot create a fiction what's actually not happened right now. You can't create a fiction that's not happened right now. 
you can create something that has that is not existent. Right. And for me, this final, это кали у автора ломается лог, и не может писать книгу. Yeah, when the author has a pencil broken down and he cannot write a book. This is the reason why this final so abrupt, yeah, mm -hmm. abrupt, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. there are no end. There is no end. And we, are Belarusians, have a marathon. And we, we, are we, have, we Belarusians have what? Marathon, 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 marathon. 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 Mm -hmm. And we have to to come to the final. Right. But this is about next film. <laughs> and about the next film. Okay, well, one more question, film-wise, um, which is. I don't know the situation in Belarus well, but the woman who was the candidate, whose name I'm going to mispronounce, help me. Svetlana Tehanovska. Okay. I thought I saw some references, hidden references to her in the film. I wondered even at the end, when the woman is talking about her husband who is, who is dead, in this case murdered, but in her case imprisoned, or when the woman in the middle of the film says, I'm a, just an ordinary woman. I wondered whether you were trying to evoke the current situation with the uh, current, the woman who was the candidate in 2020. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, 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 it was my, my decision not to have any politician in the film. No, I mean, were you um, the w reference, Reference. Were you evoking, were you hinting at a connection by having the Sex woman talk yeah. about her woman, oh, the woman, the, uh, her husband being in prison, and the uh, other woman being asked to, uh, you, you know, she, she just when she's protesting in the middle of the film, she says, "I'm just an ordinary woman," and that seems to me a line that the uh, candidate has also used. <laughs> Actually not. Not. Actually Great. not. The reason is that in Belarus, to be really honest, only frown have a power. And clever a clever manner understand it <laughs> and allow frown to be on the power. But to be honest, in this country, Belarus for Kishanchina Kirovic. Belarus is reigned by women. <laughs> really, really. Yes, no, clearly this it's, it's revolution true. has been led. Yes. Not because of revolution. Yes. The whole time. What? <laughs> well, that's a larger subject, and I think I'm probably not qualified to explore it. Um, were you, were, were you, you were one of the cinematographers? Mm -hmm. You were one of the camera people? No, no, it was Tanya Horici, she was a cinematographer. Uh, but the work, how many when you were when the crowds were out in the street? How many camera people, not directors, not sound, not anything? How many camera people did you have in the street? How many cinematographers? One. Tanya Horichik. Wow. Let's hear it for her. Wow. I, I assume. Wow. I assume at least two, maybe three or four cameras. And was she ever in danger? Sure, we, we, we cannot allow to have almost two cameramen because we we uh, we should be really like invisible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And if you are only two person, yeah. Mm -hmm. There were only two of us and I was trying to distract the police and you know, wow. the military men. Wow. We have plan. Yeah, we have plan. Mm -hmm. Vistania, just the crucial turku. Very often I played a fool just to, you know, to distract you. Maybe it wasn't so difficult, no? <laughs> <laughs> men, men roll not to watch in eyes. Mm -hmm. And this is what I mean. Those that men always wear turku stay spirit in me, you will need to watch it. But I want to have a tiny dance with the mind. Okay, that's what I mean, like playing a fool. I would stand, just not look into the eyes, not looking into the eyes, and she would just, just you know, roll. yeah, keep roll. shooting. Well, I think the title, Courage, um, certainly applies to the dissident, the theater of people, but I think it also applies uh, to the uh, technical, to the filmmaking process itself. And on that note, I would like to uh, open up and have a few questions, and then maybe we will we will continue this conversation. Is there any? And if if you ask a question, 
please speak loudly and you can speak in Russian, in Belarus, in English, whatever you want, but speak loudly. Please. Okay, I have a question about safety and about like this ethical thing when uh, in the Czech Republic, especially when you document, you always threaten somebody's safety. Especially now when everybody gets arrested and there are faces of people and so it's a very um, difficult uh, ethical decision for a documentary filmmaker to choose if you like either you show these people or you don't. And when I've been watching it, I was like, okay, like most of the people I see there are already in prison or they are already somewhere in Europe, but some of them are probably still in Minsk. So how did you solve this? Uh, like ethical question okay. for yourself. I'm going to make sure that you, did you understand the question? Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's the reason why Belarus not, uh, why, the, why this film will not uh, show the Belarus. Yeah, actually. Hopefully they won't see it because, I mean, they by the government. They said it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Uh, there are some important protagonists that uh, we asked here, yeah? Victor, X Am Amon, and other people, yeah, except the Tao, and about the wall. I asked them and asked for their permission. Yeah. As, as, it, as Belinada uh, selected the film, it was clear that the film will have uh, a long uh, festival life, and it will be a visible film. Uh, and all of these people say, I stand behind the film, and I want that sense all these topics will be in film. So there's only one, unfortunately, not so good uh, story. It's regarding the music from Victor Tsoi, Perimen, Changes. I was very naive to write, as typical Belarusian, to write a tone of Victor Tsoi, the owner of this lead right now. And I explain the whole story, explain this film. Uh, there is this song in the film, during the Dennis uh, uh, drives the car, on the nights of, of August, and this song is very important for this film. As for the whole August 2020, if people were there, they can understand me. And the song of Victor Tsoi said to me, I, I'm not allowed to use this song in this film because I don't want that this song will have a parallel with revolution in Belarus. It's only one. Uh, and then I really googled who is this Alexander Tsai. I understood that he writes for Russia Today. And I was so naive to be so honest. <laughs> yeah. So you went ahead and used it anyway? No. Yeah, no. I found other. Oh. And I think nobody can recognize it as a song. Oh, okay. And it's a song from Aerospair. Venezuela. Venezuela, yes. Great choice. <laughs> uh, yes, Mira Bank. Um, in the, I'm going to take this off so you can hear me. Toward the end, um, the actor who is plays the husband is speaking um, on the computer to someone who says, what is the plan? And how will we? Um, so my question is, what would that plan be? How could people help them in this situation? How would that work? It's, I, I respect that you can't show that in the film, but as somebody who cares about these people a lot by the end of the film, I, would, I wonder if you can talk about that. First, I want to make sure that everybody hear the question, which is, when, um, is it pa Pavel? The, you know, when Pavel is, is listening and saying, you know, what's the plan B, and, and a voice is saying to them that we'll be able to get them out of the country and we can go through the border in Lithuania and Poland, um, was that real? Could they, did, were they protected at that moment? Were they going to be okay? What could anyone do? Could, could anyone help them? Is that fair? Yes. Yeah. Actually, Dennis, Pavel, and Marina are in exile in Kiev right now. Uh, so that was after the fact, that question. Mm -hmm. uh, she's saying, did, were they still in uh, Belarus when that conversation was happening? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. He was in Belarus, and uh, it was conversation with the theater director of Belarus for Theater, Nikolai Halesin. He, is, uh, he was in London at this moment, and there are no plan B for theater. 
to be honest. And the problem was that uh, nobody couldn't understand in this moment what's will going on. And then uh, it was February 2021. Harlan Dennis has also a musician band, yeah, quite famous in Belarus, the broken heads of one guy called. And during one uh, concert, yeah, uh, on the 13th of February, it was night from St. Valentine's Day, some, gu uh, some guests come from the Leeds, and they arrested the whole audience. I think it was the same amount people of we, we today. Uh, it was 70, 80 person. The whole band, Project Chinese, you can imagine, all staff from the theater was arrested. And they were arrested uh, to the jail. And uh, 15 days after that, Pavel and Dennis realized that they cannot continue their musician uh, career, and they decided to come back here. And after uh, Brian had uh, kidnapping yeah, uh, in May 2021, Marina wrote me a SMS 10 minutes before they uh, had a, fl a flight from Minsk to Kiev, the last flight before sanctions come. Yeah, and say, Alexei, I cannot live in um, feeling of fear and scare, and I will fly with my husband and my child to Kiev. It means that uh, all three of them decided themselves to come to Kiev. And uh, part of the troop of those who uh, was in Minsk at this time. But uh, last month, the uh, last part of the theater also uh, moved to exile. And right now, they are in London uh, having one uh, theat theatrical show, and then we moved also uh, to to Kiev and then to Warsaw. This means that these guys that uh, working so courageous 70 years could not. It's over. It's over. Mm -hmm. It means how repression is at this moment strong. That yeah. These courageous people are not able to continue their work. Mm -hmm. In the back there. Yes. But my uh, question actually was uh, like to pick back a little bit on the standard question about the ethical aspect of like in the con nowadays context what's happening in Belarus. I, I understood that you have the uh, like agreement with all the protagonists of the film, and their consent, and that they are now uh, like escape the country safely. But there are a lot of like close shots of all the people in the protests and. Did you get the consent from all, like, I assume that's possible. And do you, like, as a filmmaker, ethically um, think it's justified to, like, spotlight the attention to these people to risk probe their safety in the contemporary, like, in order for, like, the greater good for the change? Or how do you answer as a filmmaker this very, I assume it's a difficult dilemma? Can, can, can I, can I, before, before uh, uh, Alexei answers it, I want to say that this is one of the great problems in documentary film, and there are guidelines that we use, and one of them is that if somebody has decided to go out into the street and make their own person public, they are displaying themselves publicly, then the general rule, even in a difficult situation like this, clearly those people who have come out onto the street, some of them have chosen to wear a mask, in which case their identity is hidden, and others have not. And we respect the individual decision of the person who's come out onto the street. I, I, that would be my answer. Now, obviously, you may have a, 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 another one, but that would be mine. I actually agree with you. Uh, uh, it's not possible to, to, to get an, an agreement from 400,000 people. Uh, and it's a documentary. It's observation. Yeah? It's, it's not a fiction. Uh, I take responsibility. And uh, uh, the plan, actually, the first plan was to show this film online. 
to Belarusian because hundreds of Belarusians write me every day how it's possible to watch this film. For sure, I wanted to show this film, but I can't. The plan was to show this film online for the anniversary of night of August 2021. And we have prepared the platform for this, only for one day to show this film Belarus. But after the conversation with Tanya, with some part of the team there in Belarus right now, I decided not to do it. Because every person understands that Gubasik, uh, Amon, all these people will arrest all these this people from the team. And it's about uh, uh, responsibility. I cannot lose the trust of five people from my film team, not to speak about the thousands of demonstrations, and to uh, take risk and show this film. And it's my decision. I will not show this film below. But I mean, people who probably make the decision to arrest someone, they And perhaps people who were going out in the protest at that moment, they did not you know, realize the repercussions and that level of repression that will follow. So to justify that yeah, they do that even to go in public, like it's very hard, I think. But this film not in public. This film not in public. This film will show in the yeah. festivals in, uh, uh, in the world except Belarus and Russia. It's not in public. This film will never in YouTube because it is Archos Kino. Yeah. Thank you. But we can we can speak maybe later. The, the, the most uh, uh, popular question uh, in every QA. I have only one answer mm -hmm. to speak about those. And it could help to break this informational vacuum mm -hmm. that regime created since 27 years. This liberal vitrine that 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 he bought it to West Europe, yeah, to read books about Belarus and uh, yeah, to watch film fr from Belarus. But that's a tricky part, right? Because I can't send a link to my friends and say go ahead and watch that movie. Yeah. But and, and I mean <laughs> to give information for American people, for example to speak about them and say, look, what's happened in country? And it's not uh, in, in uh, sorry, it's in Europe, yeah? I mean, this way. Uh, because I'm artist, I, I cannot uh, 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 speak about other uh, view of uh, waves of, of protest. I'm not politicians. I can only do with, 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 with visual tools, yeah? And cinema is visual tool, and it works very strong. And I would like to add one other point to that. I thank you for that beautiful statement, and I'm of course sorry about your, your father, but this film actually has to be understood in a global context, which is that authoritarianism is on the rise in all different parts of the world. I can think of three or four films from all over the world that are documenting a similar process of, of, that have documented a similar process of repression. And we in this country ourselves are struggling with how strong or fragile our own democracy is. And I think that one of the things that can be done is it, 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 Belarus can be discussed in a broader context, which is to say how energetic are, 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 are the Western nations going to be in, in defending and promoting democracy within their own homes and within, uh, uh, because the authoritarian nations are clearly working together and supporting each other and one of the not stated but nonetheless visible parts of this film is that at some point uh, and you can feel uh, Pavel's fear at the end when he's at the computer. He's much more afraid than he was at the beginning of the film. And that doesn't just have to do with the, color, the Belarus, but it has to do obviously with the uh, Soviets and the FSB and all sorts of very sophisticated help that that, that, that uh, regime is getting from other authoritarians all around the world. And so I think one of the things uh, Belarusians can do is really assert 
their part in a global drama of which we are all, and that includes the United States, very much a part. And on that somber but nonetheless important note, I think we have to get the hell out of this theater because they have another screening. But uh, I thank you really all for coming, and I'm so, so pleased we were able to have this conversation. Thank you.